views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Hello and welcome to Open 2.0. I'm your host Kareem Hines and on this edition of Open 2.0 we are pleased to be joined by director, producer, and photographer hailing from the new school here in the Bronx. Please welcome Maka Rose. It's a pleasure having you here today. I'm glad to be here. Um, you, with you being uh, hailing from the new school, you're an inspiration to the kids in the Bronx, right? Um, so may I ask what's your inspiration? Who inspired you to become? My biggest inspirations are probably my dad and my mom. Uh, my dad is a fine artist, he's, he's a painter, and my mom has just been an overall creative. So I think overall, those are probably my two biggest influences. But outside of that, I'm a huge fan of Jim Jarmusch films. I really like Hype Williams style. I really like, um, I always draw a blank here. <laughs> uh, but there's a lot of directors. Um, Ryan Coogler, I think is amazing, right? He's from Oakland and I'm from mm -hmm. Oakland and I feel like watching his films and really identifying with the things that he shows, that's like super interesting to me. And like, what are some major influences in becoming these, like the producer, director, and filmmaker, um, photographer? So, like how I became and yes. Okay, well, this was sort of a long process. It started off with me being super interested in photography early on, like in elementary school all yes. the way up until. I worked in science actually for a long time after uh, undergraduate. And at some point I realized that science just wasn't the right fit for like a lifetime career for me because mm -hmm. I had been working also concurrently as a creative and I really had to take the leap and come to the new school and do media studies and and really flush out like I want to be a director and I wanted to be a producer and I wanted to create more than just like photos on the side and that's how I got to here where I am directing short films and I am directing videos and I am creating a lot of work in the past couple of years. And you being a director and filmmaker you make you watch a lot of movies right? Mm -hmm. So do you have a personal top five? Yeah so Fifth Element is one of my favorite ones. Great Love movie. Jones is one of my favorite ones. Fight Club is one of my favorite ones and actually I think that if you put them three films together you probably have all of my films at some point being represented in those three. That's amazing. Um, and like, like what are you looking for in a project? When I look mm. for a project First and foremost, I look for a really good story. I'm most interested in black stories. I'm interested in black diaspora stories. I want to hear about uh, really personal, really like in-depth uh, experiences of black people around the world. And those are the kinds of things that I want to tell. And then I look at like what are the parameters because that actually helps me as a creative to figure out like what's the best way I can create something in three days with like $500. <laughs> and, um, and those two things together are what I look for when I'm looking at a project. Yeah, and with me being like uh, a student, which f like works in this area, as in you know, media and industry, like I have to deal with it too. And I know you have to deal with it. like um, getting getting people to work like properly with like yeah. collaborating with people. Yeah, so that's probably the hardest thing to do is getting people to work for free. So, yeah. especially as a student and trying to get other students on board. So one thing is is really um, look for other students that are grinding, right? Like that's off top. You want to find yes. people that are really good in what they're doing. If you know somebody of somebody of somebody that's like a really good editor, you find that person and don't be afraid to reach out to them and be like, I need you to edit this. And you're going to get full credit and I'm going to share your, your work everywhere. Um, a couple different ways I've worked around that is like feed them really well. You yes. have to spend the money on that. I'm sorry. You just have yeah. to. Um, if you can't pay them directly, pay their MTA. Mm -hmm. um, make sure that your schedule is clear way up front. If you can plan as far in advance as possible, people tend to be a little bit less flaky. Another thing that I've found is if you uh, do a lot of rehearsals, including camera yes. rehearsal, sound rehearsal, you'll see who's showing up and who's not and those are the people that are invested in your time and those are the people that you end up working with over and over because you you end up building a really good crew out yeah. of that because one people see what you're doing and and they believe in what you're doing if you've taken the time to actually do all these rehearsals and make something really beautiful and with the collaborations um may i ask may i ask if like 
with <coughs> the people you've um, collaborated with that you actually, like, actually worked perfectly with and got it done? Yeah, I just worked on a short film, on my short film, called Respeto, and it's still in post-production, so there's nothing to see yet. Mm -hmm. But the DP was Michael Santiago, and that was, like, a perfect combination. Uh, he delivered beautiful scenes. Like, the, it was exactly how I saw it. And part of that was you as a director have to be a really good communicator with your DP because, like, I've worked on other stuff where I wasn't really clear about what I wanted. Um, but even just downloading pictures from the internet and being, I want it to look like this, <laughs> is really, really helpful. I also just worked with Sharita, who works with you, yes. and she was my producer, and she's great, right? Like, she was somebody that I could come to and be like, I want to get this location solid, and I, I personally don't have the time because I'm working out the shot list, and I'm working out yes. with actors and doing all these other things. She got it done, like, and, and these, um, and my sound people have all been really good. I just, it's like once you find those people, you hold on to them with everything. And, like, they, <laughs> they tend to, like, they, they, stay, they stick around and it helps you out a lot. Yeah, and one way I think I would recommend for students to, to really think about is when you have somebody that you're working with really well, make sure you recommend them to everything and mm -hmm. also show up for all of their things. Like yes. everyone sees themselves as a director, which is great, but we have to respect each other as directors. And give more support. Yeah, and so like my actors, um, they're, they're all doing their own projects and stuff, and you have to make sure you show up for them in order for them to show up for you. So one of my actors is a comedian, and it's like, yeah, I'm gonna go to her shows because she comes to all of my stuff, and I haven't been able to like really pay her yet. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's worth it to, to make sure that you're showing up for your crew, because they'll remember that, and they'll keep showing up for you. Yeah, it's, it's logic. If, if you don't show up, they wouldn't, they-, they Right, why should they show up for it, you? Yeah, it's yeah. Like, hey, you don't need to be here. And like with, with those actors, like you show up to theirs, they show up to theirs. I mean, it's, it's giving a mutual bond, like mm -hmm. just giving a strong bond with them, mm -hmm. and it helps out with everything because that means they're gonna be there when they when you need them. The and most. also, you become friends, right? And there's there's better communication on set, and there's better translation of what yes. we're both trying to do on set, right? Yes, and it gives it it makes it easier. So, um, and with that, it just. It, lo it makes it more lively mm -hmm. on the set, and even like after um, like after rehearsals and everything, it, it helps out and it gives them like more relief. Like if yeah, then working with brand new people. Right, and we just did a screening of um, the footage of that short film, and they then they came to see it. Right, like you you showing up for them means they're going to come to all of your events. They're going to come, and it's it, you become a little mm -hmm. community. And once you've built that, like you'll see that a lot of directors work with the same actors and work with the same crew and stuff. And that's how that happens, and that's why that happens. It's, you do become like a little group of friends that makes mm -hmm. everything together. Can you hold that thought? Yep. Um, um, sorry, we have to take a quick break, but stay tuned for more Open 2.0. and best friends. I love my sister. My heart, my heart is a doesn't see race. race. Love, love is love. Our family is no less than any other family. Love is kind. Love is patient. Welcome back. Uh, welcome back to Open 2.0. We continue our discussion with Maka Rose. And we left off uh, on talking about, uh, what was it again? Uh, high school students. Yeah, high school students. And what you guys can do. Yeah. Um, there are several programs here in New York. So I'm not originally from here, so I can't just spew them off the top of my head. I know that Real Works is one, um, and I'm losing some other ones. So I'm, that's not my forte. But what I will say, and what my advice for high school students is, yes. is if you can pay PA on anything, PA on anything, whether it's yes. free or whatever, just do that. Meet up with as many types of crews and people that you can. But the biggest thing I would say is just keep making. It doesn't matter what kind of camera you're using. It doesn't matter what kind of gear you're using. Just keep making stuff. And yeah. I would also recommend that even if you can't get into a program, because a lot of them are expensive and there's things like that, 
try to get into as many competitions as you can, like the 48-hour competitions. There's a lot that come around yeah. for high school students and college students. Um, there's a seven-day festival that is uh, Imagine Science Films, which I actually did, and you make a film in seven days. Um, and anything that you see like that, like participate. It'll get you out of your shell about showing your work. It'll get you uh, in, like throw you into, we have crew, we gotta make this and we gotta do this in like yeah. two days. Um, and Vimeo actually has a weekend challenge, pretty odd. I think it's once a month. Yeah, I so, so. Yeah, and so I think just constantly making is the best advice I have because it's like if you're just sitting around waiting for like 10 people to come together to make your film, it's not gonna happen. But if you and like three other people are down to just like make you this thing over the weekend, do it. Because yeah. the more you do that, the better storyteller, better of a storyteller you become. And by the time you get to 10 people on crew, then you'll actually be making something really dope. Yeah. And you're a photographer too, right? Yeah. And so, what do you look? What do you look for in a, in a pic image, like in a picture? The most important thing that I look for in an image is, what story are you telling? It's fine to make a pretty picture, but if it doesn't say anything to me, it doesn't mean anything to me. And that's always the question that you should be asking yourself: is what am I trying to get out of this photo, and what am I trying to say with this photo? And like, what do you do with like the evolution of photography? Like the new cameras, new lenses, like the it technology. Goes, yeah, so that goes back to my answer about just making. I wouldn't be so worried about what the latest gear is. I would be much more concerned with what are you telling from this? Like you can use a really, really old like Hasselblad camera, yeah. right? And, and you but you, but if you're image. making something really dope and you know exactly what image you're looking for, that's what matters. And in your opinion, what is, like, what is the most important thing to consider while shooting a portrait, portrait picture? Ask yourself how you're trying to portray this person. Yeah. That's probably the most important part of that question. What's the background that you're trying to show? How, yeah, what, what story you're telling and how are you portraying them? And um, with that, like, what inspiring stories have you created to, on screen with using the pictures and also video? Yeah, in Smile, uh, which we just finished and is in a festival now, it's a story about a couple who is breaking up and getting married at the same time. Oh. And yeah, so it's like, are they gonna stay together? What's gonna happen here? And uh, the main character is a photographer and Michael Santiago's work is in that, yeah. his photos are in that. And he's a really amazing photojournalist. And um, the beginning of the film shows his work as the main character's work. And so that's like one way that I use photography to inform film and to also share other people's stories within my films. And what are you, what, what are you passionate about? What drives you? What pushes you to be this? Well, somewhat like I said earlier, I am passionate about telling black stories. I yes. really want to give voice to a lot of the voiceless. And not necessarily voiceless, it's just giving a space for people to feel like they're seen and feel like they are represented in a way that is respectful yeah. and in a way that is lacking in most media. Yeah, and what are some projects that, been, that you have been working on? Lately. Um, like I said, Smile Film is yes. out now. Respeto's in post-production, post and that's about um, an Afro, he's a Honduran poet yes. uh, who's living in New York and he's washing dishes and trying to get to a place where he can live as an artist and not a dishwasher. Yeah. Um, I worked on a sci-fi film, which was about, a lot because my background is in science, it was about a lot of the different science essays that are out right now and it's like how far would a person go to change their personality like would they take medication to do that mm -hmm. would they actually go through a surgery to change their personality uh, and I'm working on another one where it's about a, it's a comedy sort of um, but it's a sci-fi also and it's about a really annoying AI that like wakes this person up and brings a drone in it's crazy anyway but it'll be like five minutes so it's like these are different projects that I'm working on and yeah, yeah. so um, like what can people contact you you can find me on Instagram that's probably the best way so yeah. that's Maka Rose just that and I have a website, macarose.com. A lot of my work is on there. Actually, the best work is on there. You should probably yeah. look at that. So Instagram is the best way to contact me and get to me. And, and my reel and everything else is on my website. It was website. a pleasure having you on the show today. Thank you. Um, unfortunately, that's all, we, all, that's all the time we have for today, folks. I want to thank our guests, Macarose, and you, the viewers, for tuning in. Until next time, have a beautiful day. Smile. <laughs>